Today we're going to build a 72 hour kit. In the event of an emergency where you have to leave your home immediately, you need to have a 72 hour kit with you. Water, shelter, and food in that order. Why is this so important? Water, you can't live more than three or four days without water. Shelter, if you get cold and you can end up with hypothermia because your body's not able to regulate its temperature. And food is the final step of this three-part process. When I was in the Army, we were always told that if we don't have water, then we shouldn't eat food. Water is designed to keep us hydrated, but also to process food. We're going to build a kit using a bucket. Now, some people don't like to use a bucket. Some people may like to use a backpack, a military-style backpack, or others might use a waterproof backpack. You might use a plastic box that has a good lid on it. Regardless of how you decide to build your kit, we're going to make sure that you use all of these essential items. Now I'm using very specific products in my kit, but this is only my kit. What I want you to get out of this is the principle of what you want to put in your kit. So download the resources I've put in the comments so you can follow along and see what I put in my kit and you can make notes about what you want to put in your kit. So what I have here on the table is what we're going to put inside of our 72 hour kit. Now just because I put them in my kit doesn't mean these are the exact things you need to put in your kit. Water is essential to life. I mean without it you're going to die. Our, most of our body is made up of water. Most of the planet's made up of water. And there's water everywhere. So why do you have to plan for your own water? Well in an emergency you may not have a chance to go get water somewhere. Experts recommend about one gallon per day per person. So for one person, that's three gallons. Well, how much really is three gallons? Well, this jug right here is a three gallon jug. These water bottles, these water bottles are 16 ounces. You need 24 of these. So pretty much a case of these. Um, they've got these, these canned waters. And again, these are, again, 12 ounces. So you would need four of these for your entire three days of water supply. Another option is if you live in an area where you've got streams, rivers, and lakes, is to have a water purifier. The Life Straw is exactly what it sounds like. It's a straw that has a filter in it. And to get the water out of the straw, you put one end in the water and you suck it out. There's other filters on the market that allow you to pump the water out of a water source and into some type of a container. If you don't want to mess with all the calculations of how much water you need, just go ahead and get yourself a big blue five gallon jug, fill it up with water and keep it with your kit so it's ready to go in the event of an emergency. I will have a military two quart canteen. It's a collapsible canteen. Uh, you can always use it as a pillow in the event of an emergency. But right here in this pocket, is where you would put your water filtration tabs. And so you'd fill this up with water from a water source. Uh, you wanna make sure you don't get a bunch of leaves and other crap in here. Fill it up with a water source and then drop in a couple of tablets, wait 20 to 30 minutes, make sure you shake it up real good and you can drink this water directly. This is my, this is my water setup. I personally use this five gallon jug. I carry the life straw with me and I always have my two quart canteen. Many of the items that I talk about in the video can be found in the description below. When you get evacuated from your home, you don't necessarily know where you're going to be sheltering for the night. It could be at a, a shelter set up by the state or federal government, or it could be in your car or a neighbor's house. You don't necessarily know exactly where you're going to go, but these items right here will help you be comfortable wherever you are. So we talk about shelter. We want to talk about shelter, but also about being warm. So when I was in the Army, I know I talk about it being in the Army all the time, sorry. But I learned so much in the Army. But we would go out on patrols, sometimes up to three days. And we didn't have the luxury of taking a tent and a sleeping bag with us. But we always had a poncho and a poncho liner. Everybody knows what a poncho is. It's a big, flat piece of plastic with a head hole in it. You put it over the top of your head and you button it up on the sides and sometimes you can use it to cover your backpack to keep everything dry. Well, we always had one of those, but if you didn't have something like that, um, you could go, and I got this on Timu 
regardless of what you think about Timu. You can find these down at a sporting goods store um, near you. Army surplus. But what this is, is an emergency blanket. And all this blanket des is designed to do is to keep your heat inside. So as you, you, as you grab the thing and you pull it over the top of you, this is going to help to keep the warmth that you have inside you. All right, so let's take this to the next level. Right now, it's already starting to heat up in here. So let's take this to the next level. We've got the poncho liner. Now, what this is, it's a nylon fabric that's woven, and inside there's a little bit of, of insulating material, like a polyfiber. This is the blanket that I would always carry with me everywhere I go. I mean, I'm a civilian, and my wife and I have these upstairs on our couches because we don't like to have those little cotton knitty blankets. These things, if you spill on them, you just wash them. They're not going to stain. If they get dirty, who cares? Okay, but now you've got this warmth layer. Now, if you want to stay warm and dry, now you get your poncho or your emergency blanket and you put it over the top of you and you're going to stay dry and warm. Almost too warm sometimes. So let's take this. Let's say you don't have one of these. Let's say you don't have one of these. You can use any little blanket that you have, but I bet you somewhere around your house, you've got a garbage bag. And you're like, Robert, are we gonna go pick up trash today? Well, not exactly. What we are gonna do is we are going to make, we're gonna make a tarp out of this for yourself. So let me get my, I'm gonna go ahead and then right in the middle here, cut a little V. There's a little V, and over here on the side, I'm just going to cut a little armhole. I'm a bigger person, I make some bigger armholes. As you see, it doesn't take very long to do something like this. Open it up. Put your arm up. Put your other arm up over the top and now you've got a rain jacket you've got a way to stay warm you, you want to you don't want to get your arms wet you can go ahead and put your arms back inside the other thing that you're going to need is a hat this right here so your blanket up under you and you're going to stay nice and warm wherever you're at and what does the bag cost a quarter you probably like I said you probably have a bunch of these inside your house right now. So um, these are the few things that we have that you can put into your kit and will give you immediate shelter. Other things you can use are uh, a hammock. You can use um, a bedroll. There's there's so many other things you can use, but we're talking that everything that you're going to be saving in your 72 hour kit fits in this six gallon bucket. Okay. Next, so one more thing, since I have never used this before, uh, I'm putting it away and I'm saying, oh, I gotta fold it back up. And I'm thinking, well, this should have been a bigger, wider um, emergency blanket. But look at what this is. On the inside, it's open. So now, I actually truly have an emergency sleeping bag. <laughs> okay, now we can move on. My personal 72 hour kit, I keep foods that can be readily eaten. Meaning I don't have to stop and heat up anything if I want to eat it. For example, if I want to eat Vienna sausages, I just pop the top, get a fork and start eating it. I don't have to heat it up. but. If I have a way to heat it up, I actually can. Um, the same thing goes with beanie weenies and these pastas, uh, peanut butter, crackers. There are all different ways 
These are all different things that I can eat um, on the go. By all means, if my situation allows me to make a fire or use a chemical stove to heat up water or food, I'm definitely going to do that. I've got dehydrated and freeze dried foods in addition to other foods that can be heated up and they'll feel nice and warm to me. Um, a warm meal actually warms the soul. It'll raise your spirits and it'll put you in a better frame of mind. Another quick and easy thing you can have in a 72-hour kit is a MRE. These are meals ready to eat. This is actually a, a military meal. Um, this one here is a civilian version of, of that military meal. Um, as you can see, there's got a bunch of different things in there. They're pretty much the same. Uh, but the th thing about these meals is they're high in calories. So in a survival situation, you need lots of energy. And MREs provide lots and lots of calories. But you can also get a lot of those proteins and high calories with freeze-dried meals too. So depending on your situation and how you want to prepare, these are different items you can add to your kit. Another thing that's really nice to have, if you go to Walmart, um, I found these walking tacos. I found pulled pork. We've got refried beans, tuna. My stuff is all falling down. Um, I've got chicken here. These things, you just tear the tops open and you grab and go. But what's important with all of this stuff, make sure you have a, um, a fork and a spoon or a knife. So remember, this is your kit. Put things in there that you're going to eat. If you don't like granola bars, don't put granola bars in there. If you're a chocolate lover, make sure you put chocolate in there. But every few months, you want to swap that stuff out because it'll whiten up and kind of taste bad. But I guess in a survival situation, a bad chocolate is better than no chocolate. So, all right. Stay tuned. I've got a couple more things that have to go in this kit. This is the bonus. What else goes in a 72-hour kit? Well, for me personally, these are some of my items. But remember, you need to customize your kit for your circumstances. So I always have a first aid kit. Inside my first aid kit, I have a tourniquet. I've got some clotting stuff. I've got bandaging. This is just the basic steps that I have. Um, I always carry meds. Um, it's good to keep a three-day supply at least in your kit. If you don't have extra medication that you can just put into your kit, make sure that before you leave, you put a note on your kit that says, grab your meds. <clears throat> um, I always have a compass with me because you just never know when the GPS is going to stop working. Talk about GPS. If the GPS in your car stops working, I've got a regular GPS unit that I can carry to get me to a location that I want to get to. <clears throat> Other things that I always carry in my kit are important documents. These are driver's license, insurance cards, life insurance stuff, um, social security cards. I don't carry the actual cards or the documents themselves. I make copies. Um, I always recommend making copies of your uh, of your important documents and then putting some of them on a backup uh, flash drive so that you can put inside your kit as well. Um, carry extra cash. In a grid down situation, there won't be any banks open. Um, even if you can get to an ATM and there's no power, you're not going to be able to get any cash. You could add a little bit of silver or gold to this, but I don't think it's necessary. In the first two to three days of the emergency, people are going to still take cash until they realize the lights aren't coming back on. Um, I've got a radio. Um, one of the radios, so this radio, it's a Baofeng. Um, I don't know which model it is, but the nice thing about it is it has a flashlight on the bottom. Um, Welcome. Oh, it says Frequency welcome. Mode. Frequency mode. And I can turn the flashlight on. Um, it's got a little flasher thing and turns off. Um, it also has weather radio. It has a regular radio. And it also has a weather radio. Great thing to have in an emergency. Now, if you're going to carry, this is a shortwave radio. And if you are going to carry this and talk on it in normal times, you definitely need a ham radio license. I'm sure I'm going to get dinged by everybody that has a ham radio license. I'm in the process of getting one, but just don't transmit if it's not an emergency. Um, I'd rather ask for forgiveness than permission. Um, <clears throat> I was at the store the other day and I found these little cards. 
These are a little set of survival cards by Ready Hour, and in here there's little um, hints and things about what to do in certain situations. This is a fun thing to have with you, um, just when you're sitting around, nothing to do. Talking about cards, if you're sitting around for a few days, cards are a great thing to have. Um, other things, let's see, I I don't have it posted, I don't have it here, but I've got toilet paper in my kit, but I also have body wipes. You're gonna get dirty and stinky, so make sure you keep yourself clean. I have a regular flashlight, I have a regular pocket knife, and then I also have a multi-tool. This is a Gerber multi-tool, but uh, any multi-tool will work. Uh, toothpaste, toothbrush, um, <clears throat> I've got gloves. You never know when you're gonna need to do something you need gloves. Um, I've got tape, a little bit of duct tape. This is the Gorilla Tape to Go. It's real thin, about one th inch thick. Um, got a cup, gotta have a cup because you're gonna boil water, gotta have a cup. That's your pan, that's your drinking cup, that's where you put your purified water. Um, silverware, uh, pick this little plastic set up. Uh, they're pretty good. Um, uh, battery backup. This is just a cheap battery backup that you can use. So this is it for the 72 hour kit build. So like I said in the beginning, you can put all of your stuff inside of a bucket. You can put it into a backpack. It doesn't matter what type of a container you put your kit in, as long as when it's needed, it's ready to go. The next video in our series, we're gonna take this basic 72 hour kit, but we're gonna customize it to people who have small children or infants. What about somebody who's in a wheelchair or they have a device such as a CPAP and they need to have electricity to stay alive? We're gonna cover that and more in our very next video. Thanks so much. I appreciate you spending the time with me today. Go out and do something, and please remember, subscribe to our channel and share this with your friends. See you next time.